in one of my um, videos, I think it was a fishing report, I put out and I asked people, what would you like to see for some fly tying? And overwhelmingly, there was a couple of them, but one of the more overwhelmingly requests was for me to show you the um, fly that we refer to as steely crack or steelhead crack. And so I got thinking about it, you know, sure, I'll do it. But the real secret is about the fly, it's a willy bugger. Yeah, you Google up how to tie a willy bugger, your computer will explode. So, yeah, we're going to add ours to the heap. But anyways, yep, steelhead crack, it is a willy bugger. So, we're going to, I'm going to go through it. I'm going to tell a little bit about the fly. And, yeah, I'm going to go to the vice. I'm going to tie a willy bugger. Sorry, folks. I'm going to join the crowd. But in this case, bear with me. Um, because in the process of tying it, I'm going to tell you how I, my variation, how I tie it, what I do to build the fly, and why I do it the way I do it. Maybe in the process, as you know, all you fly tires has tied hundreds of dozens of willy burgers ago. Hey, that's a good idea. I'm going to do that for myself. But anyways, the, the willy bugger or the steelhead crack is. Um, it's a variation of a brown woolly bugger. It's tied with a furnace hackle, which is a brown and black hackle. I'll show you the hackle and what it looks like when I get on the tying bench because I like that multicolor um, look to the uh, fly. And also, it's that, and as you can notice in here, it's done with a, um, in this case, on a size 4, it's got a copper uh, cone. And on my size 6s, I'll run a copper bead. So the cones and the beads are copper. The hackle and the tail is brown. And sometimes I'll even, in one of my examples, I think I have some. I'll do it on there. It's got some um, dark olive uh, crystal, crystal flash in the tail. I kind of like that. Sometimes I'll add a little crystal flash in my woolly buggers. And if I don't like it, I'll just cut it out. If I don't want it in there. Uh, but the biggest thing of this fly is the chenille. Um, this is uh, kind of a... Oops, got some black marabou in there. Been tying a bunch of stuff. Uh, this has got that uh, variegated kind of a glow chenille where the, uh, it's a black with a copper glow flash variegated into it. It's hard to find the stuff. Uh, it's not really, you kind of got to track it down and search and see if you can find it. Uh, most shops just don't carry it. In our case, we have it. Um, custom made from a company that makes chenilles so we have it custom done and which works good for us because we go through so much of it I mean we buy them by the skeins multiple skeins so it's quite often we get a box shipped in so that's what that's the deal with that it's, um, there's a couple options you can do if you find like a brown and a black variegated or some sort of variegated you can use a copper wire um, ribbon in there. I'll, I'm going to do this in my demo. I'll show you how you can use a copper wire to make a much more secure fly and add a little bit more copper flash to it. That's an option. You can run some copper um, flashaboo along the side of the body then Palmer over the top of it. That'll put a little bit more copper flash in. We've had success. That works good too. So there's a couple different options you can do. Uh, the other thing is is we go through so many um, uh, go through so many woolly buggers. You can imagine when we're guiding, we got two people out, we're having a good day. We could go through a dozen, half to two dozen, sometimes even more um, flies in the course of a day, especially when the fishing gets hot. And so what we'll do is we'll tie all of our, and we'll just tie just gobs of them, you know, tens of dozens, and put them in storage bins. And uh, to keep everything straight, what I'll do is, as you can tell, the size 4 will have the cone, the size 6 will have the bead, and usually if it's a 4, I want a heavier fly anyway, so I prefer to have your weight of the cone. And the 6s, I don't want it so much weight, so the beads work good. And plus, when you, when I'm looking and I'm in a hurry, if I just see cones, I know they're 4s, and if I see beads, I know the 6s are smaller. So that's a way to manage large volumes of flies um, when you're in a hurry. So that system works really good for me. Normally, I don't tie woolly bugger is bigger than a four anyway so if I know they got cones on them they're fours so that's one way that um, that's why I use the cones on my fours and my beads on my sixes and smaller so I know my sizes so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add to the great woolly bugger 
genre on YouTube and tie one myself. But in the process, like I said earlier, I'm going to go through, I'm going to show you the furnace hackles I like. You can see that model look when you get a close-up shot of the flies. It really kind of looks more crittery-like. Um, I don't know why these fish take these woolly buggers, but they do. They could be scalping minnows, other minnows, crayfish. Everything in nature has a model look to it. So I'm going to show you that, and I'll show you how I build the fly and why we do it certain ways. Um, you know, the reason why we use so many woolly buggers is because you can't fish them wrong. You know, if you're not a good dead drifter, you can dead drift these things. If your skills are not that good and your dead drift is a little sloppy, the woolly buggers come alive and they fish very well. Uh, if you, we could be dead drifting one spot and work out of that little pocket or something like that, get into a bigger water, we can immediately, without changing much, we can then fish them on a swing. The fly fish is good dead drifted. The fly fish is great on a swing. You can strip them. You can't fish them wrong. And, you know, it's... That and the, um, one of the best way to describe it is I have a saying, I never had any luck telling a fish what it wants to eat. And in this case, woolly buggers are an impressionistic fly. They look like a lot of other stuff. And being that way, um, a fish can decide what it is and what it wants it to be, and generally then they'll eat it. So that's the nice thing about it is it just looks like a lot of different stuff, and the fish decides what it is and eats it. And if you're dealing with crabby fish and they want a soft to drift, you can dead drift it. If you're dealing with some aggressive fish and some bigger pools, some longer runs, you want to cover fast, you just start swinging it. So it fishes in multiple ways. You can't fish it wrong, and it looks like a lot of stuff that the fish want it to be, and that's what makes it so successful. And as for the, this color combination, this copper flash, I don't know why to steal that eat it so, so aggressively, but they do. And the nice thing about that is... When the steelhead season's over, you want to go smallmouth bass fishing, the smallmouth will wolf it down. They really like it. You're in your favorite trout stream. In a smaller size, like a, even the fours I've done well, you can you can fish them with streamers and, and drift them around and be very successful because even the inland trout and your regular trout during the trout season will eat them up. So it's a great fly to have in your arsenal. The biggest challenge in this whole pattern is trying to find the chenilles. And, you know, I can't really help you much. You just kind of got to be on the constant hunt for it. So, at this point, I'm going to stop jammering about it. I'm going to move the camera over to the fly tying vise. And I'm going to get to tying the fly. Alright, here's the steelhead crack. And in the closer shot, you can see the model color but with the black and the brown mixed into the hackle. And as I get going, I'll explain about the hackle. So let's get tying this fly. I'm going to add a few extra little add-ins on here. Explain to you what I like about them. Get that out. For this purpose here, I'm going to use a Daiichi 2220 size 4. Um, obviously got the cone on it already. And I like the Daiichi 2220s. I think they're a 4X long hook. They just turn out to be an ideal woolly bugger hook in size 6s. I've had really good luck with them. I'm going to start out and I'm using some black 80 uni. I do like the uni threads and I prefer the 80s because I like the little heavier thread because this obviously is a bigger fly and I do build them a little bit tough so I can get multiple fish on them. And we're going to go into our marabou collection. Get it in the camera here. And select a couple of marabou palms. Now that looks really good. And we'll work on the tips here. That looks nice and full. And get that in. There we go. Now really quick, I get fast at this. I want my tails to be about the length of the hook shank or just slightly shorter. The reason is, is a lot of people have really long tails. And if you got a really long tail on there, often the fish will come up, especially bass. But very often I'll find trout and steel do that. I just nip at the tails and I never get around the hook. So I, the solution I found is, is generally to keep your tails about the length of the hook shank. So that's my yardstick for how long I want everything. And then I'll just tie the bunch on. Now really quick, because I'm dealing with this cone, I'm just going to slide that tail up into the cone a little bit. So the tail's a little bit shorter than normal, but who cares? When the fish comes up and grabs the tail, it's going to get a mouthful of hook. 
there we go see if I crowd up in there and pack stuff in around the cone there then the cone stays a little bit more stable now we're gonna add a little um, couple little add-ons in here and here get it in the camera you can see it's kind of a olive um, crystal flash I found that that little add-on enhancement uh, works pretty decent and I got them already kind of preset and they're about the length of the tail I just put a couple strands in in this case they're long enough where I can just kind of fold them back and run them along the side nice thing about that is that little bit really can make a difference and if you're in really clear water bright days low water and the fish are a little bit shy of the flashy stuff you can just cut them off and do that when you're on the stream the other little in extra I'm going to do with this is I mentioned earlier about using copper wire so I'm going to add in a little bit of medium copper wire whatever width I use depends on little what I have on hand in this case I got some medium and I want it to be visible so I'm going to do that now for hackle let's see here this one I already got pre kind of prepped what I did is I peeled back the um, back stem here and the reason why I did that is, is um, you'll see is when I tie it it's out of the way and I often leave the back for for a finger hold now I talk about furnace and furnace hackle traditionally will have uh, the black centers and the brown outsides but in this case it's just the opposite I got a lot of black and brown mixed in here some of it's a little bit um you know like in here I got browned and blacked and brown again and so on what I'm looking for is the brown and black splash the mix of color more than anything um, I, the furnace is great when I can find it and if I can't find any of this then I just go ahead and just use plain brown it's, I found the flies work just fine with a plain brown hackle so often we have to work with what we can find now here you can see I'm peeling back I right, get my hands out of the way how I prepped the tip I got most of the fibers straightened out and I got just a tip in here I'll come in tie it tip first there we go and then obviously we'll the chenille here we are it's just build a woolly bugger 101 everything tied in a uh, quick little note is I like to keep everything pretty even a lot of people just tie the marabou in clip it right there tie the chenille in and cut it right there and you end up with a bump back here and your flies end up with the dreaded lumpy butt disease so in this case I like to that's why I run the marabou all the way up to the cone or the head or the bead or whatever I'm using it no less does it give us something to pack in behind the cone a little bit but it also helps keep the the bodies consistent so you have a nice um, nice looking fly run this up with the cone I'll actually cram in onto the cone a little bit and try to use the material to stabilize the cones it's kind of tough it's a little easier to stabilize the beads it is the cones couple little turns anchor it now what I'm going to do is palmer that hackle up since we're going tip first here we go now you can see how we're starting to get a little bit of a collar a little turn there there's not enough on this particular hackle to create a good collar so we're gonna add a second hackle in. get in here clip it take my fingers get back into here what I think I'm going to do is it looks like it's pretty easy before I add the collar in I went this way with the uh, this way with the hackle I'm going to go this way counter wrap with the wire wiggle it back and forth just take your time and just kind of wiggle it so you don't pack in a lot of little fibers in the hackle and compress it and any that you can press later on I just take a little dubby needle or um, my whip finish tool and I'll just pick the hackles out from under the wire so they stick up but in this case I'm going to do this before I put the collar on there we go and it's a little easier to do it now um, before I put the collar on. Another little quick tip don't use the tip of your fingers to cut it come back in the back of your scissors right back in here and use the, use the back of your scissors for wire cutters and that way you don't dial the tip of your scissors up where you do most of your tying cutting now in this case I got a little shorter fatter piece of hackle um, that I'm going to use for a collar I'll just clean up and put that on 
more traditional way that we put on most collars. In other words, fat size first. And I'll everybody asks me how many turns on a collar, how many turns on a hackle on a dry fly, or on or how many turns I'm gonna do on a wet fly or a willow bugger for a collar, I tell everybody the same thing until it looks right. That looks pretty good. I'll get in there and get a couple, three, four, five turns, snap that out, come back, catch with my fingers. These are my hackle guards. Get my fingers on there. One, two, three, four, get a whole bunch of turns in there. Then I can kind of porcupine it out. And find my whip finish tool. And finish off the fly. Now, like I said, I do like get a little bit more of a broadside look here. I like collars on my um, on my woolly buggers, so I always make sure that I tie a really good collar in front because I think that adds a lot of um, action to it and gives a nice tapered look to the um, fly. A lot of your scalp of minnows are really thick in the front, wide in the front, and narrow in the back. A lot of your minnows are chunky in the front, narrow in the back. Uh, same thing, I think, it, you know, I think a lot of fish eat this thing for a crayfish. So it's probably got that thick crayfishy look to it. Plus, I, I always like that soft hackle look to it when it goes through the water. So that's why I always make an extra couple turns, put in a collar. That's why I like to tie them tip first. The wire will add a little bit of copper flash to your fly, so if you can't find any galotion, copper galotionil, um, that's a good way to get around adding to the copper. Once again, I keep my tails about the length of the hook shank, so I don't. that helps with the short strikes. And ladies and gentlemen, that's all it is to steelhead crack. Like I said, it's just a woolly bugger. But in this case, this woolly bugger has a little bit of, we tie them a certain way because that's what we found works for us. All right, how I fish to fly. I use a couple different setups when I'm fishing this fly. When I swing, obviously I'll use sink tips and very often we're either fishing a Skagit or a Scandi driver head. And often these things will use um, various sink tips. These are uh, Mo tips which I really like from Rio. And some poly leader tips. I don't know what this is. I got so many mystery tips. But anyways, we'll use various of these things and we'll set them up off of either a Skagit or a Scandi driver head off my spay and switch rods and a lot of the which driver head we use has a lot to do with um, water conditions speed depth and all that same thing with these tips so you can fine-tune what you want these tips I run about a four to six foot leader off these tips when I'm not doing that and I'm running either a Scandi with a full leader or a Skagit with a floating tip and a flow and a full leader I'll run um, nine foot well this is my steelhead leaders they're about 10 feet and then i run about three feet of tippet i just grabbed this spool to have me 10 pound i'll use 10 or 8 and then off to the fly and about 30 inches away i'll add a little bit of split shot depending on how deep the pocket or the slat that i'm trying to drift through or swing through so th that'd be the sit um the two setups sometimes i'll like i said i'll fish it off a a full traditional leader 10 foot leader with about that includes about three foot of tippet with a little bit of weight above your tippet knot off my full floating setup or if I'm going to run sink tips um, obviously these are the tips I'll run and I'll run about a uh, four to five foot leader depending on water conditions and of course water conditions dictate which tip I use and if I'm going to be using a Scandi or a driver head so that's basically the setup and how I fish the um, the steely crack this is Jay at JPEC guides and Lost River Fishing. We are a year-round fly fishing catch and release guide service. We fish the Lake Ontario tributaries. And then during the spring and the summer, we also fish the inland trout streams, classic dry fly fishing. During the heat of the summer, we will do the warm water fishing for bass and pike. If you are interested in any of our outings or have any questions, please feel free to email us at fish at Lost Rivers Fishing. Dot com. Hope to hear from you.
And if you have any questions, feel free to contact us.